for Lesson 2.2b, Calculating Experimental Probability. We can use experimental probability to approximate the probability of an event. An experimental probability of an event is found by comparing the number of times the event occurs to the total number of trials. When there is only one outcome for an event, it is called a simple event. So this is experimental probability. For a given experiment, experimental probability is this ratio. It's the number of times the event occurs to the total number of trials. We have a spinner with five different colors. If we spin 20 times and get red two times, we have two times out of 20. That's 2 twentieths, which is equal to 1 tenth when we simplify, or 10%. So remember, when there's only one outcome for an event, it's called a simple event. So if we spin once and get red, it's a simple event. There's one outcome, red. So here you can see we've got a table, and the table shows the results of spinning the spinner 25 times. We can find the experimental probability of each color. So red was two times, orange is five, yellow is four, blue is eight, and green is six. We total all these spins. It's 25 times, like we have here. This is going to be our denominator, the 25. For red, we have two 25ths, which as a decimal is eight hundredths, which would be 8%. Orange, we have five 25ths, which is one fifth which is 20 hundredths, we could also say 2 tenths, and it's 20%. For yellow, we have 4 twenty fifths, 16 hundredths, 16%. 16 Blue is 8 twenty fifths, 32 hundredths, 32%. Green is 6 twenty fifths, which is 24 hundredths, which is 24%. So if you're confused about how I went from this fraction to here, I'm going to have some links in the description to 6th grade math when we learn how to do that. We just need to figure out how to make this 25 into a 100 so we can have hundredths, and we would need to multiply it by 4, right? So that means we're going to multiply the numerator by 4. That means we're going to get 24 hundredths, okay? So that might be enough for you to go on. Now, there are two ways we can find the experimental probability of not spinning green. So these were our outcomes in the previous problem, and green was six times out of the 25. Well, what's the probability of not spinning green? So the first way is we could add the frequencies for red, orange, yellow, and blue, and find the ratio of the sum to the total number of trials. So we have red, orange, yellow and blue, and totaling them would give us 19 25ths, which would give us 76 hundredths, or 76 hundredths, written as a decimal, or 76%. That would be not green. We didn't include the green. The second way is to use the complement of the event by subtracting the probability of green from 1, because that would be 100%, wouldn't it? So we have 1 minus this 6 25ths. We can write the 1 as 25 25ths and subtract 6 25ths and get 19 25ths, which gives us 76 hundredths, just like we did here, which is 76 hundredths, which is 76%. Now, everyone who does this experiment can get different results. Each set of trials will result in different sets of data. You could try this experiment with 25 spins and get completely different numbers for each color than someone else. Experimental probability is always based on events that have already occurred. It's based on the number of trials we have already performed. Theoretical probability is based on the likelihood of an event and is the ratio of the number of ways an event can occur to the total number of possible outcomes. We're going to talk more about that in Module 13, in Video 13.1, and we'll explain more about that. So here we've got a bag of colorful gems, and we can see there are 
two blue ones, and there's four pink ones, and there's five green ones. We remove one gem at random from the bag and then replace it into the bag. So remember, in order to have an equally likely outcome, we need to put that gem back in the bag so we have an equal chance of pulling one of ten gems from the bag. And we repeat this process through 20 trials. That means we do it 20 times and record our results in a table. And what we find is, in this case, Pink was picked three times, blue five, and green 12, which is a total of 20. We had 20 trials, and that's going to be our denominator. So find the probability of picking pink. We write it as a simplified fraction, decimal, and percent. So the experimental probability of picking pink is 3 twentieths. It's 3 is the frequency it occurred. We can see that there. And 20 is the total number of trials. And 3 twentieths is 15 hundredths, which is 15 hundredths as a decimal and 15% as a percent. We finish this lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, which is making predictions with experimental probability. So remember as you're doing this, we need to add up all the times, the frequencies for the number of trials, and that total number is going to be our denominator, okay? Have a wonderful day. Join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.